Good, e good evening, Chair. Good evening, Members. My name is John Ferguson, Collective Planning, with the planning consultants representing the clients, the applicants here, yeah. Crouch End, FEC Limited. Oh, just, can we just wait, just wait a minute? Just oh. It's all right. James is just uh, the officer is going to start first. with an introduction and you're going to speak That's after right. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, James. <laughs> Uh, well, good evening to members, and um, I first wanted to check that um, everybody had a hard copy of the DM forum note for this item. Uh, members may know that the DM forum for the site was quite close to this evening's meeting, so we weren't able to include um, the feedback from the um, forum into the report. So that's um, that's been tabled and it should have been circulated, so if everyone has a copy of that, um, this note summarizes the feedback from the forum. Uh, the pre-application site is the Hornsey Town Hall Complex, uh, which is partly located within the Crouch End District Centre on the east side of the Crouch End Broadway. Uh, the site's 1.3 hectares uh, and is also located in the Crouch End Conservation Area. Um, there are a number of listed buildings on the site, um, and the site includes the Hornsey Town Hall, uh, which as members know is one of the first uh, modernist buildings in England, and the structure carries a statutory listing of Grade 2 star. Um, the Broadway Annex building is also uh, listed Grade 2, and uh, the pre-application site, pre site will also uh, include a small part of the Hornsey Library, which is listed Grade 2. Um, the site is strategically allocated in the local plan. Um, the site allocation, SA48, promotes mixed-use development with town center uses, uh, publicly accessible community use within the town hall, and a key part of the site allocation is the restoration of the um, town hall building itself. Um, I now wanted to pass the floor, uh, without further ado, to uh, the pre-applicant's representative to outline the pre-application proposal to date. Uh, over to John. Thank you. Yes, just very excited, very keen about this scheme, so jumped in too soon. So as I was introducing the team here, we have um, the client, FEC, and we have Make as well, who will be presenting the scheme. Um, so the, the client will introduce themselves now. I'll say a few words about the planning context, and then Make will present the scheme. Yeah, good evening. Uh, my name is John Connolly. I'm Head of UK Development for FEC. We are the, um, the chosen partner by Harangay to uh, restore um, and redevelop the town hall, um, which is, you'll, you'll see now. We're obviously, we're very, very excited about this project, it's taken some time to go through the OGU process to get us where we are now, and we want to get on with it. Um, we understand that it's a high-profiled um, scheme, especially in the context of the local area. And we're trying to really future-proof this town hall um, to make it um, what it needs to be with regards to community access. And we're very passionate about creating a scheme which we can all um, respect and it's got legacy. Uh, in terms of uh, a couple of points I want to raise before um, uh, Katy gets on with the, the, the detail is we've, um, we've, we've secured, um, so we've, we've, um, we've signed a, a community access statement with the council which secures public access to the town hall and we have created a number of different um, options in order to, to really thrive in, in, with the operation of the town hall and, and really we want to make sure that it embraces everything with regards to the community but also as a self-sufficient uh, project moving forward. Um, it's a significant investment on our behalf, one of which we are more than happy to do um, and we are hoping that we um, have got the right plans in front of you today which will allow us to see the success of this development. Um, just one thing, which um, in, in terms of the elements of, of the hotel, which we're looking to put into the town hall, um, we are hotel operators uh, as well as, as developers. Um, we are looking to install, again, a significant amount of investment within this to create a space which we, we believe will work. Um, we've done a lot of research, a lot of gathering of exercise in terms of and ensuring that we do have the right credentials for the hotel to work in this location and we are very passionate that it will work. Um, so yes, we're looking forward to it and, and also I think it's, it's fair to say that we've got a, in the UK a very good track record of delivering developments with, um, with town halls, I'm sorry, with listed buildings, uh, one of which is our Shepherd's Bush Hotel which is operations very successful with both embracing the community and employing local people. Um, so that's all I've got to say. And then just very briefly on, on the planning context of this site, as you're probably aware, a, a planning approval um, was in place from 2010 for a very similar scheme. This was renewed again in 2013. 
Um, the site has got an adopted and emerging local plan allocation. Previously, the UDP allocated the site for a mixed-use redevelopment, um, and this same allocation has been brought forward into the emerging site allocation DPT. Uh, this allocation includes restoration of the existing list of buildings to create a future use for these buildings, which complements Crouch End District Centre with enabling residential development. The allocation states that new uses will be considered with the aim of finding a use that benefits the vibrancy and vitality of Crouch End District Centre. The proposals before you comply with this allocation, as well as all the other policies in the local plan, the proposed uses of the Town Hall comprise predominantly community uses, with also additional bars and restaurant uses, office space and hotel use. All these uses are supported by the allocation and contribute to the vitality and vibrancy of Crouch End as well as enabling a long-term viable use for the building. The enabling residential development to the rear is supported by the allocation and is within the appropriate London plan density range. Local and strategic views have been tested, which confirm a proposed mass and bulk has an acceptable impact. Over the past few months, we've been working incredibly hard with your offices, with Historic England, uh, local stakeholder groups, and the wider community to create a scheme that secures the sustainable future of the Town Hall and meets the needs of the local community. Okay, good evening. I'm Katia Garamani from Make Architects. I'm going to take you through the slides uh, showing you the proposals, um, both in terms of the Town Hall and the residential to the rear. Um, so as James said at the beginning, the uh, image that you see up there is showing the development site. It includes the town hall itself, which you can see, uh, town hall square, which faces onto the Broadway, uh, the Broadway, the Broadway annex, which is also grade two listed, the land to the rear of the Broadway annex off Rose Place, which uh, we call the Muse, and obviously the, the land to the rear of the town hall itself. Um, access to that land to, from the rear is from both Harringay Park and Western Park um, currently. Um, we've done quite a lot of research into the heritage and history of the building, which is phenomenal. We love the building. It was designed in 1933 in an architectural competition by Reginald Uren. Um, and it's an absolutely beautiful civic building. Um, a lot of his design is still there, albeit in, in poor state. Um, and our ambition is to repair and restore the building predominantly rather than changing it in any significant way. And I'll show you in terms of the historic fabric and I'll show you the plans in a moment. Um, we are taking into consideration not only the building but also the setting of the building at the front in terms of Town Hall Square. And again, I'll show you the proposals for that. Um, currently, again, as James mentioned, the uh, building is on the Heritage at Risk Register for Historic England. It is very damaged, particularly if you look at these assembly hall pictures. Uh, the ceiling is caving in. Um, it has been repaired in a patchwork manner, uh, but really it needs wholesale taking down and reinstating. And we've discussed methodologies and so on with Historic England. Uh, the roof is a mess and needs to be sorted out. It's leaking, hence the damage to the ceiling. It needs to be insulated so that it's not thermally um, uh, leaky. Um, there's a lot of damage to the wood panelling, as you can see, which will need to be replaced. This is due to the water pipes which are um, behind that wood panelling. So there is a lot of work, repair work, um, reinstatement work that needs to take place uh, within the fabric of the building to bring this building back into use. Um, as John mentioned, there was a consented scheme in 2010. These are the um, drawings from that scheme. Um, it had a lot. It did a lot of work to do with the assembly hall, which we've taken on board. It was valuable work in terms of looking at reconfiguring the assembly hall to contemporary uh, modern day needs. Um, but one of the big drawbacks we felt of the scheme was the fact that it had residential in what's called the East uh, built Wing and the Link Building. And we felt that this was uh, damaging to the historical fabric of the building, and it also meant that there was no public access to these parts of the building. So we've taken the residential out of the town hall in its entirety, which we think is a very positive statement for the town hall, and replaced that part of the town hall with the hotel rooms, which is much more in keeping with the, with the original plan, uh, the corridor and how it accessed and the room sizes of the current office spaces. Um, and this has been supported by Historic England as well. 
Um, also, just one minor detail to do with the assembly hall. The consented scheme had a balcony level running round it at high level, which again blocked some of those beautiful windows. And again, we've removed those. And again, this has been uh, positively supported by Historic England and the Council. Um, in terms of the overall master plan, um, as was mentioned, uh, the residential, which is indicated in yellow on this plan, this is a ground floor plan, is the enabling work, um, development for the repair and restoration of the town hall. Um, this is predominantly delivered through the two new blocks at the rear, blocks A and B, as you can see there on the land to the rear of the town hall. Uh, there's a new building also in the Muse, which is also indicated in yellow, and there's residential in the listed Broadway Annex on the upper levels. The ground floor of the Broadway Annex uh, will be cafe and restaurant use activating Town Hall Square. In terms of the vision for the Town Hall itself, uh, we're very passionate that this is used and it's a very vibrant space. It is space for the uh, community. It is an art center. Uh, it is space for performances, concerts, talks, um, different variety of workspaces, co-working, workshops, artist studios, uh, space for community classes, whether that's for adults or children, rehearsal space, uh, music, space for music, and also think taking into consideration consideration the external spaces so Town Hall Square and what I'll show you is Town Hall Gardens as part of the arts offer uh, that is delivered from the building. Just starting on the plans for the, uh, for the Town Hall itself, this is the ground floor. Um, the green indicates all the community uses, so these are workspaces, performance spaces, uh, public spaces. The pink is cafe and restaurant and the blue is hotel. Um, as you can see, the hotel is, as I said before, in the East Wing and Link building. On the ground floor um, of the um, Town Hall, we also have a cafe and res restaurant facing onto Town Hall Square. And one of the other big changes that we've been trying to do as part of the scheme is to make the building as inclusive as possible for all. So for people in wheelchairs, for young children, for elderly people. And we've improved the ramp access to the assembly hall. We're putting in new lifts to provide this access. Um, so it is a totally inclusive and accessible building. Moving down to the low ground floor, uh, the supper room remains. You can see there's a lift um, just adjacent to it, which serves from the low ground floor all the way up to the second floor. And the hotel wraps around the lower level, uh, accessing direct into the existing courtyard spaces, which will be re-landscaped. The loading bay remains the rear where it is, and that is a central loading bay for the whole development. Um, the spaces to the rear of the assembly hall, labelled artist's dressing room, uh, we're envisaging that these would be fantastic workshop spaces or additional workspaces, and they have their own stage door access, and again, a new lift provis provision to the rear uh, to give the, uh, inclusive access to the rear of the assembly hall. Moving up to the first floor, this is where the council chamber is and the committee rooms. We've created a new performance and function space which matches the new space um, underneath. So we're providing more spaces than is currently uh, in the building in terms of function and performance uses, um, as well as retaining the office space in the West Building and then the hotel, as mentioned previously. And then the top floor, you can see the hotel uses. There is a rooftop bar, uh, which is accessed um, from the public space. And we've also used the space within the loft ceiling of the assembly hall to create. Additional workspace. Um, moving to the public realm externally, we, took a, we did a lot of consultation at the first consultation in May to do with the public town square and what the public wanted, what the community wanted for this space. And there was a very strong feeling towards what we call the heritage option, which is this, which is it's inspired by Uren's original design. The current scheme that is there is not original and wasn't um, designed to be the setting for the building. Um, the new square design uh, retains the fountain, repairs it, retains the same quantum of green as is currently there, albeit reconfigured, retains the mature trees and relocates the, the amnesty tree, as we call it, to the location of the historical third tree that was there and creates a wide space to the right of the, the square for markets and other one-off events, community events that could be taking place there. Moving to the rear, we've also created a new additional public space, which we call Town Hall Gardens, which can be accessed directly from the ground floor of town, the Town Hall, and which gives access from the Town Hall to the side of the library, so there's a connection there. 
Um, we're using the natural topography of the site to delineate between public and private uses. So this play space, which is adjacent to Town Hall Gardens, is more private, as it is at a lower level, and then it steps down again to the private gardens of the residential. The residential buildings themselves are inspired by the design of the town hall with the use of the heritage brick. We've also taken into consideration the Grade 2 Hornsey Library building because we think it's a beautiful building and forms the setting for the new residential. Uh, so in terms of how the pattern and relief on that building work, uh, we're looking at the details of the town hall of how um, Uranus used stone portals around openings, windows, doors. Um, and then how the simple volumes, brick volumes of the Uren scheme are softened by the very detailed balustrading um, and the detailed metalwork. So we've brought all of those ideas into the design of the new residential building. We've got a total of 146 uh, units spread out um, uh, between the Muse, the Broadway Annex, Block A, Block B, um, and in a mix of one bed, two bed, and three bed, which is um, in keeping with Haringey's um, mix requirements. These are just some of the images, um, some artists' impressions of Block A to the left, Block B to the right. Uh, block A is predominantly brick with the portal surrounds, stone surrounds, and Block B relates much more to the library uh, with a patterned um, reconstituted stone facade. And you can see the detailed balustrading there that we've um, taken from the town hall design. Uh, and there's another view here. We've run uh, some verified views. We've had a specialist called Cityscape run the verified views, which are accurate, and the views have been agreed with Haringey. So there's eight, a series of eight views. Um, this is the view from the Broadway, which forms the setting for the town hall. And as you can see, the residential buildings uh, into the rear are almost invisible, um, and therefore we do not think that there's any impact on the setting of the town hall. Um, moving around further up the Broadway, um, the building is just to the bottom right, you can see it's so far behind the, the buildings that it's not visible at all, it's just shown in a dotted line in a cloud, so there's no impact there. Um, from Haringey Park and the library, there's some very mature trees, but again, the scale of the buildings is in keeping with the library and surrounding residential um, areas, because the Block A steps down towards Haringey Park. Uh, looking back the other way, again, you can see the dotted red line behind the trees from Western Park. Um, um, I've finished. Um, carry on and, and f finish. Last slide. Okay. Um, and this just shows the access to the site, vehicular access. So we've got car parking under Block A and also some car parking at grade between Blocks A and Block B. And this is access from Haringey Park. Um, we've got access to the rear of the library for the housebound um, van. Um, we've got the consolidated loading bay to the rear of the town hall. This is for residential, community uses, and hotel. Um, and then we have a managed drop-off at the front of the town hall for pre-booked disabled um, or other users that would, might need some additional support getting into the town hall. And this is a, just a view of the square. Um, as might be in a couple of years' time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, can we have a ward councillors now? I think it's just one, Councillor Doran. You've got three minutes. Oh, two. Come, do, you, do you want to both come up? And... I think you've got three minutes each. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, so I think what, what's really important is the, the context of this. This is the biggest issue um, for us, I think, as, as Crouch and councillors, for myself and Councillor Elliot and Councillor Arthur, who can't be here tonight. And when we stood for election initially in 2014, the biggest issue that people complained about was nothing going on in Town Hall, no real plan for the future. It was, as we've heard, the buildings in decline on the at-risk register. People were very angry about it. People were also aware there have been many attempts to solve this issue and get um, a solution for what is essentially a town hall for a borough that doesn't exist anymore. So I think people are, are realistic that something needs to be done and it's not easy. Our priorities are essentially the community priorities. We've done a lot of consultation as this. I think Sarah and I as members of the Creative Trust but also as board councillors speaking to people uh, almost week in, week out through certain periods to, to, to understand their concerns. And I think what, what our priorities are absolutely is restoring the building and bringing it back into, into use. I think having a meaningful art centre operation going on, it's worth saying that ANA, who are in there at the moment, um, who came in after we were elected, uh, they've done a great job. I think we need to see a real step change in terms of how the building is used. 
think we want to see com meaningful community use uh, and access to the building, meaningful community governance, and that's something we fought hard as uh, ward councillors to get a community use agreement, which was referenced and is available online. I think we want we want to see investment in, in the public spaces, um, and, and that's a really important priority, especially the public square. We fought hard for that to be guaranteed that it will remain a public square, and that's something we feel very passionately about. Um, and also something that's very important for us is as ward councillors and, and for the local authorities to see the maximum amount of affordable housing uh, on this site. We understand that it's a very difficult site. There's a lot of things that I've just laid out that are priorities for the community. We understand there's got to be trade-offs, but we're fully committed to pushing for all of those things. And I think you'll see us back here at the committee and um, still banging the table and banging the drum for these things. As well as securing as much as we can of all those trade-offs, I think we, we need to see sensitive development. We need to minimize any detriment there is in the local area. Um, this, again, this is difficult. For the scheme to work, we accept Hornsey Town Hall has to be bustling, has to be thriving. That means, by definition, there's going to be people coming in and out. But we need to do that in a way that minimizes harm for people on Haringey Park, on Western Park, Bourne Road, and the roads... Uh, around that, so that's another really important um, priority for us. So I guess the, the, the conclusion is uh, this is really important for us. We want to see a, a competing range of things perhaps go on, but I think we can we can push for those. We can do a lot on this, and um, we appreciate this ambitious, but we're going to push uh, for the council, for the developers to do the most that we can. It's a delicate balance, um, but we're going to continue working hard to get the best for the people of Crouch End. Hi, everybody. So, yeah, as Natan says, we've been working in really hard. It's, it's, it's right in our hearts, I'd say. The three, you know, three counts and crouch end counts is right in our hearts to get this absolutely right. It seems to me that what we're doing now is going to have more impact on crouch end than anything we could possibly do in the next 10, 20, 50 years, to be honest. This is going to set crouch end up for a long time. So we, you know, we want absolutely the best outcome for the Tutta Town Hall and the surrounding land. We're going to continue to working hard, working hard to get the absolute best deal for Crouch End as we can. We want to see the, the full restoration of and, and the correct investment in the building. We want a world-class arts centre in operation, meaningful community use, access and governance, and improved public spaces. And we also want to see as much affordable housing as possible. It's, that's also right, at, right in everyone's hearts. We all feel that that's essential. And I'm speaking as, I'm also a member of the Horsley Town Hall Creative Trust, as, as Natan is. I should mention that also as well. The two of us are. Um, and it, it's worth remembering that the, the project to restore Hornsey Town Hall and restore it to, its use um, to the community was always based on the following principles. Using the sale of housing, land, to, de de to devote to its restoration and making it fit for purpose and sustainable for the future. Achieving maximum public benefit for Hornsey and Crouch End communities by providing access and use of Hornsey Town Hall by the community, by the community both as individuals and as groups. And creating a high quality mixed use scheme befitting iconic architecture and benefiting local businesses, visitors, the environment and so on, as well as community uses, users. So, and I, and I feel as though this, this scheme is, is largely fulfilling those elements, which is great. Now, currently we do have a couple of concerns. These were around the phasing of the re refurbishment of the town hall in relation to the sales of the res residential properties, i.e., we don't want to see properties sold before the town hall is finished. It's absolutely key. Um, and the other thing is ring fencing the necessary funds that are needed not only for the repair of the building, but to create that fit for purpose refurbishment of the town hall and its environs. Okay, thank you. Um, I think, um, members, you can ask questions now, bearing in mind this is a pre-application and you need to not um, pre predetermine, <laughs> I keep getting this wrong, um, yourselves, right? So anybody want to question um, Councillor Patterson? 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I understand that discussions with the applicant about the provision of affordable housing are ongoing. I'm just wondering if the officers could provide some updates on how these discussions are going. Uh, well, thank you for your question. Um, the issue of affordable housing is highly dependent on viability. So um, the applicants confirm for us that the um, viability assessment is going to be deposited right when the application um, comes in formally with the council. And so it, it's up to them when they apply, but they've committed to bringing forward that assessment at the outset of the application. Um, the council then undertakes um, a third party consultant to do an assessment of that viability as to um, if it's a robust assessment. Um, and that will um, set out what the affordable housing offer is and that the sort of assumptions that underpin that. So um, we're anticipating that that process is going to get underway as soon as the applicant uh, lodges the application with the council. Councillor Mann? I had three questions, but one's already been asked. So, um, Historic England on page 175 said that the increase in the height of the buildings at the back in one of the residential blocks appeared to be just above the roof line. Um, their preference, Historic England's preference, would be that this element would be reduced in height still further and recommend this option should be explored. Has it been explored and will you change the height at all? And my other question is the quality review panel, page 159, says that the public spaces between the blocks need to be improved. There's actually quite a long piece, but it said need to be improved. So what steps have you taken to improve them? Thank you, Councillor Mann. Um, so the first time we saw Historic England uh, block B, which is um, that block there, as you can see, it's just labeled block B, uh, was uh, seven stories above ground. Um, as a result of discussions with Historic England and Haringey and undertaking not only the verified views which we have today, but also daylight and sunlight assessments, we've pushed Block B down by one story. Um, so Block B is now six stories above ground with a lower ground floor. Um, so we've mitigated that issue. Um, in terms of the QRP and the spaces in between the building, we went to see the quality review panel very early on in the proposals, and we didn't actually have at that stage any um, firmed up proposals for the spaces, for the residential uh, amenity spaces at all. Um, so those have been developed in a lot of detail with a provision of play space, uh, with a lot of um, an analysis to do with the trees and retaining the trees, with how we use landscaping in terms of um, preventing overlooking to neighboring properties. Uh, so there's been a lot of work done since the QRP um, and that will be part of the application. Um, Councillor Carter. Um, thank you, Chair. This is a question for officers. I appreciate that the question of affordable housing is still uh, a matter of discussion and in flux, but I'm just wondering whether the Council has any feel for the amount of uh, affordable housing that ought to be possible on this site, please. So what you've got to remember with this scheme is it's not the same as the conventional um, housing scheme. It's a scheme where the residential development is enabling development to allow for the um, for the restoration of the listed building. So what we what we so it's in a sense you look at this in a different way. You look at how much money it, you need to do up the listed building, and and how much development you you need to kind of do that will be acceptable within the parameters of the impacts on the listed building. Um, and so that's the process that we need to go through. Now, I, 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 I'm not, I don't actually know what level of affordable is going to be in the application when it's submitted. I don't know whether that is something that the applicant's firmed up yet. So I'm not in a position to say what we would expect because we haven't seen the figures. I don't know how much the refurbishment is going to cost and how much money um, the enabling development is actually generating. So we can't kind of say that. Any further questions from councillors? Councillor Bevan. Yeah, so I'm going to mention the affordable housing because I know the conservation officer wants to get the town hall restored, but affordable housing will have a great influence on the response of the community and the planning committee. So you're producing 144 apartments here which will sell for substantial sums of money in that area. So there should be the ability to afford some affordable housing 
even though the cost of uh, restoration is, is increasing. And in this part of Haringey, we would expect the majority of affordable housing to be social rent, because that is the policy of the council for this part of Haringey, not uh, shared ownership or outright sale. Uh, a compliment you on the wheelchair accessible spaces. They match the wheelchair accessible unit, so that's, that's really good. Uh, you've answered the question about the extra uh, roof and the reduction there, so that's good. There was a couple of points that come up at the uh, public meeting, the development management forum. There was mention about the bar on the roof. I don't quite, if you want to talk, talk about that, explain that. And then there was concerns that it was going to be become a gated community. That was mentioned at the uh, management forum as well. And then the last point is parking. I mean, this is 144 units plus a hotel, and there's only 40 parking spaces, and a lot of them are underground. So would it not be possible to put some underground parking in addition at another block so that you've got two lots? Because 40 for 144 units and a hotel seems quite problematic to me. Shall we start with the rooftop bar? Uh, so the rooftop bar is on the second floor. Um, there's currently a flat roof. It's there at the moment. Uh, there is um, access to it currently. Um, all we're doing is we're opening that up to the public so the public can enjoy it. Um, and it can be served by that small pink room on, on the plan. So that, that's, it's, there's no um, additional structure going up there. It's just giving public access to a space that exists currently. Could you remind me what the second question was before the parking? Um, if I go to the uh, master plan, um, we are proposing to put some gates um, to the north of the town hall because we have a north entrance to the assembly hall and we've been um, advised uh, by the current um, operator that it is preferable to have gates there for, um, for when there isn't an event in the assembly hall. Um, also because the access from Western Park will predominantly be pedestrian access as well as only emergency vehicle access. We're proposing to put a gate there to prevent cars from turning in and out from Western Park. Um, and there will be a further gate for out of hours use to close off the town hall gardens at night time. Uh, but we're not envisaging that this is a gated community. Um, lastly, parking. Uh, we actually have 45 spaces for dedicated for the residential use. Um, these are some of these are in the undercroft of Block A. It's not actually underground, so there's no ramp uh, needing to um, access those. There's no lift or anything like that. Uh, we're using, the, as I say, the topography of the site. There's a fall of three meters. Um, so by the time you go from Harringay Park towards Western Park, you are in the undercroft of Block A, and that's predominantly where the parking is. There is some at grade as well, particularly for disabled access and there's some shared carpool spaces. There's a full travel assessment being done as part of the application, and the development will also be a permit-free permit development. Any further questions? Oh, Councillor Carter again. Um, thank you, Chair. Last week, I was fortunate enough to have been invited to a private function on the first floor of the Hornsey Town Hall. Um, I went to, uh, I went, it, was a, it was a limited area, but everything I saw in that area was in, in pretty good order. I'd like to ask the architect, please, um, um, of, the, of total restoration monies, um, how much would be spent on the, um, the theatre, the, the top, uh, top right there, please? Um, I don't have detailed numbers to hand. <laughs> I really don't know. We need to go through them. Um, but the majority of the works are to do with the assembly hall roof, insulating the roof, replacing the tiles, redoing the ceiling in its entirety. Um, also, most of the rainwater drainage needs to be redone, as that is what is causing damage internally to the building. 
Um, we are looking at the glazing elements, the windows, um, and where required, we are going to improve particularly the acoustics of those windows to give better flexibility in terms of the use of the assembly hall and the council chamber for performances and concerts. Um, and um, there is also um, obviously the general cleaning and all that kind of stuff that, that needs to happen within, within the space. But there is a lot of work behind the finishes that needs to happen, full rewiring, redoing the m and &E, the usual full re refurbishment of the building. Councillor Mann. Um, I'm, I'm sure you're aware that there's a festival in Crouch End and it's thriving event. You, you're aware that's gone on for a decade now. Um, one of the questions that came from the development forum was the green space. Will the design preclude the use of the town square by the Crouch End Festival? Now, you did mention that being used. So could you kind of give some answer to that question? We have consulted with Crouch End Festival um, along the way, although obviously we, do, we don't know exactly how they would propose to use the spaces. Um, but in addition to the Town Hall Square, the green, the shared uh, paved areas that we've created, there is also the new Town Hall Gardens, which isn't there at the moment. Um, so uh, in terms of external spaces for the festival, we think we actually are offering more and different types of spaces as well as the Town Hall itself. Okay, if there's no more questions, I want to say thank you very much for attending. Thank you to the councillors as well. And um, I shall return to being vice chair. <laughs>